Well, it's not even November yet. Still in October and we're getting snow. First real snow of the year, I guess. Well, I'm really winging it, but I've definitely made some progress. So I want to make another snow plow this year. And uh, I figure I'd go ahead and utilize what's left of this heating oil tank. Previously, I made a snow plow on the Suzuki Vitara and I used the bottom half of this old heating oil tank. These are nice for like a small plow. They're about 60 inches wide. And this time I think I'm gonna do it a little differently. I'm gonna try bolting some stuff on and um, then I'll have less welding and less ugly welds. I'm gonna try some angle iron all the way across or further across. And I'm gonna bolt it on Right now it's a little bit eccentric, so this would be the center here. I'm not sure if I'll keep it that way or not. I might end up just cutting that yellow line and making it uh, making it more equal. Sort of wish it wasn't the top because of the holes in it, but I think you can get shallow plugs. And I'm basically just working with what I got. That's kind of what I do. I wanted something wide that would push instead of pushing on the tank that would push on here so it wraps around so it wraps around both sides there and uh, just drill holes through here and put a bolt through here I'm trying to do less welding than last time last time I had a big tab on each side and you're basically pushing all the force into one little spot so this time I'm spreading it out and uh, trying to have a little bit of a backbone in there and a good piece to to push on and to keep the plow nice and strong and straight hopefully so I bolted on some angle irons I tried to make them as straight as I could at first and uh, I decided to mount them closer to the bottom this is going to be the bottom so if I have a scraper blade, it'll be down here. Well, that's what she's looking like right about now. I decided to use a simple angle iron on the bottom. This is actually gonna be the bottom. So it's upside down right now. So I think she's looking pretty good here so far. Strong and simple lightweight since some of the driveways are gravel i think this will be good as well instead of digging through the gravel or having a sharp edge stick out this is more likely to roll over the gravel or whatever and rather than disturb it i still might go here and chop this off but so far so good Well, I think it's starting to look a little bit more like a plow. Did some choppy choppy here and I removed this section and I removed uh, the little bit extra that I had all the way across the top there. So she looks something like that right about now. Yeah, not too bad. This time I'm doing a lot of nuts and bolts and bolting on as much as I can. I haven't had to weld a single thing yet, which is good. And I uh, figured it'd be a lot stronger this way. So the last thing I did was I drilled some holes and uh, cut up uh, a short bracket. These are three and a half by three and a half. So they're not gonna add too much weight, but they're strong enough to do the job. So I'm gonna have a hinge point down here, I guess, same as the last one. And I'll be pushing lower, closer to the scraper blade. And um, 
that should allow for some spring and hinge action up top okay so here's where i'm at right now i put a top rail across the top to keep it from flexing and bowing and i did the same thing across the bottom that's my bottom edge there that rail could be flipped or it could be tucked in or there's several ways you could do that oof it's a little bit heavy but so far it's not too bad Okay, so I started working on the next piece that's going to pivot on these two brackets here. And I'm just going to use uh, this radius plate. And it's just going to go something like that. So that way I can have uh, put the hinge point through the side here. I don't know, 3 sixteenths or... Yeah, I think they're about 3 sixteenths. So that'll allow the hinge and it'll also allow the radius for the plow to turn. Okay, so I got this sort of made up here. I need to round these corners so that way it'll fold down. It'll hinge one direction, but it'll stop up at the top. And I drilled them out to a half inch, so they're they're much beefier now. Half inch is the biggest one on this uh, tapered step bit. I got the hinge point uh, pretty much figured out there. Now I just need to find a better place for some springs. Well, I got this little A-frame. It'll go up and down with the winch, I suppose. Next thing I'm gonna do is try to marry this to this. Primarily a pivot point in the middle and a latch point on the outside. I'm gonna chop these wings off. That's just the way, that's just the way I found that piece in the junk pile. But I'm gonna chop those off so it'll come to a point. Well, I'm really winging it, but I've definitely made some progress. Yeah, I made that A-frame work. I drove the hole through the bottom plate and then I made my own little top piece. So it's kind of sandwiched, the radius plate, sandwiched in between the bottom and this top piece. Um, so yeah, so I made a crosser for that and then three holes for different radius different angles I finally figured out some spring things so I wasn't sure if I was gonna use this type or this type so I grabbed one of each just for testing and there's gonna be a lot of force on those springs I imagine so instead of pulling back on this I put another piece here but at least I don't have to worry about welding or breaking welds and uh, She's pretty sturdy. I think she's pretty well built. And the cable is not even going through the fair lead. It's just hanging there right now. So I have a upgrade, a little bigger one. I think it's a 4,000 to go on there. So I haven't really messed with that much. So the pivot point used to go straight through the frame but I ended up building this drop bracket, which I think is going to be better to get a straight push. And um, that way it's not slopping around inside of that factory frame hole. And those brackets are pretty thick. I think they're like quarter inch thick or something. So that's good. This A-frame is only inch and a quarter tubing, but it's really thick. It's like 3 16 or quarter inch thick. So. It should be strong enough. I took the pin out of this small snatch block and uh, there's the pin there and it fit on the U-bolt. So I just had a U-bolt and I was hooked there, but I think it'll be better if the pulley wraps around because there's this much here that you can't use and you can only go up so far. So I think this is gonna be better. Same with the drop brackets there. And it, it's up on 
it's up on four inches right now so it'll still go down more it'll still go up I'm actually going to replace this winch I've got a 4,000 to go on there so that's gonna be coming off but I ended up running four springs and then compound smaller springs inside of those springs Yeah, she's getting some snow now. We're actually getting our first snowflakes today. First snowflakes of the fall of 2020. I put a chain here on this back attachment point so I could attach two springs to one point. Adjusters, adjusters on the front making a big big mess as usual cut that open so i could stick a nuts and bolts in there that brings this pivot point down quite a bit there was a vertical section right there so it was open on the sides but i opened it up in the middle here so it looks like an h and that allows me to put a nut or bolt in there for these drop brackets. So I'll put some drop brackets on the frame here. That should be better. Aside from going through this hole like I was previously. That's a little bit too close to the radiator and it also dropping it down gives me a more straight approach here, which is good. Okay, we're gonna do a little unboxing on this Tundra tested 4,000 pound winch from Canadian Tire. Just gonna upgrade from this Champion 2500. I might even put them side by side and see what the frig the difference is. 